In the world of Olathe in the Lisa game series, there's a substance encased in a little blue pill that is called Joy. A somewhat ironic name, it doesn't bring the user any kinds of feelings of happiness or satisfaction. It merely makes them feel nothing. A numbness. It likely earned its title simply because it offered an escape from the misery of the land. A way to live without the pain or hurt that plagued the lives of those that took the drug. Giving them a glimpse of what living a life of true joy must feel like. That feeling of numbness seems to empower the user as well. If the drug is used by one of the party members in combat, they are granted numerous buffs, the most obvious being the insane amount of damage they deal while under its effects. However, the high of the drug will begin to fade, and the pain of the user will return, tempting them to take more joy to escape their pain again. Eventually, the pain of the user will be compounded by withdrawal symptoms, weakening them, if they haven't taken the drug in some time, creating a dependence on the drug. Joy was mostly consumed by the dregs of the society of Olathe. Outside of the crippling addiction that could emerge, the drug was mostly ignored by most of the populace. It was relatively harmless compared to the other things they faced in their everyday lives. However, this seemingly innocuous drug hid a dark secret, and its use brought the inner demons of the joy addicts into the physical world in a very real manner all for the gain of a megalomaniac that had an obsessive desire to rule over everything. It starts with Joy's creation. Developed by a scientist named Dr. Yado, Joy was never intended to be consumed recreationally. Yado had created it to be used as a military weapon. It was to be taken by a user, and they would undergo a transformation into a stronger, more resilient form, likely as a way to create a super soldier. Labs were set up thanks to funding provided by investors, and Yato experimented with several strains of the drug with promising initial results. The subjects underwent their transformation after only a few doses. However, after this occurred, the subjects stopped following orders and even lost the ability to make decisions for themselves. The researchers found they only pursued their innermost desire. Needing something strong yet controllable, the experiments were ultimately deemed a failure with the inability to control the soldiers in these forms, and Yato lost his teams and his resources. The remnants of one of these joy labs can be explored by Brad and Lisa the Painful outside a nice neighborhood. In the back of the lab, there are four vats with various specimens inside. These are the results of Yato's joy experiments, the transformations that the subjects underwent after taking the drug. The first holds a vaguely humanoid figure with a face made of fleshy flaps that fold over onto themselves. This specimen is named Mindless Sheep, but no more information is provided here. However, Brad can find these creatures out in the world in a place called the Beach Resort. Through Brad's journey here, it's revealed that these creatures are indeed sheepish. They're docile and non-aggressive. Not once do they attack Brad, nor give an indication they're about to. Due to the warping of their faces, they can't speak, but let out a low, groaning sound when Brad interacts with one of them. Exploring the building further, Brad finds a hidden room in the back where the creatures worship a strange statue, one made in the shape of a golden trumpet. All these findings point to these creatures living out a peaceful, docile existence devoted to the statue, not at all like the super soldiers that were needed by Yato. So these mindless sheep were likely regarded as a failed outcome of Yato's joy experiments. The next vat holds a curious sight, a humanoid figure with the head of a fish instead of a man, and its body is covered in scales instead of skin. This fishman mutation is named Repulsive Waste, and is quite different from any of the other specimens. Like the previous iteration, Brad can find these creatures out in the world of Olathe. While traversing muddy waters, the swamp, and Area 2, Brad can jump into one of the pools that dot the area and get transported to a place where these mutations have created an entire village populated only by fishmen. And while exploring this village, Brad finds that the fishmen aren't mindless like their brethren. They've retained their agency and actually built an entire society for themselves. They have their own clothing style and language, their own architectural style, and even a judicial system. Secluded from the chaos of the surface, the fishmen live in relative peace, frolicking in the waters of the swamp. 
This link between Joy and the fishman actually brings up questions for a potential party member. Carp is a man wearing a fish head mask that can be recruited by Brad after giving him some green paste from the fishman village. Interestingly, when he's spoken to, Carp never speaks in the common language, but always in the fishman language. And even more interesting is the fact that Carp is a joy addict. Could Carp have taken some of this fishman joy strain and partially mutated into a fishman? Could he be a sort of missing link in the mutation chain between a human man and a fish man? All interesting questions, which only beg more. If Joy transformed man into an animal, were there any other strains that created different animals? Could that explain the other strange man-animal hybrids that seem to dot a lathe? Whatever the case may be, it's clear that this repulsive waste was looked upon as an utter failure of the Joy experiments as it didn't create the super soldier that Yato and his investors were after. Suspended in the third canister is a nightmarish, ghoulish creature with pale skin pocked with wounds and lesions, and eyes that glow with a sickly yellow color. Named Violent Soldiers, Brad finds these throughout this joy lab and in the neighborhood that borders it. He finds that they are true to their name as they attack him and his group with a violent passion whenever they are seen. This is what Yato and his investors were looking for. However, there were some issues with this particular mutation. Although the creeps fought with a feverish passion, they weren't particularly hardy, capable of being felled relatively quickly. And although their frenzied ferocity was intended, these creatures suffered too much from the violent side effects of the drug and were uncontrollable by the researchers. This led to this iteration of the drug being deemed a failure due to the uncontrollable nature of the creeps but the researchers noted they were on the right path. Finally, there's a vat labeled My Favorite, which holds the twisted visions of a body that can only be vaguely recognized as human thanks to the features of its face, which has eyes that have rolled back into its head. This was the culmination of all of Yato's work, and the version of joy that creates these creatures is the one that is being disseminated throughout Olathe and consumed by the populace, evidenced by the appearance of these mutants throughout the land. However, there are some differences between this iteration and the previous ones. True to its nature, it only takes a few doses to prompt the transformation, but the transformation for this strain will only occur once the user either experiences intense mental trauma or approaches death. The physical manifestations differ as well as every host is affected differently. Some swell up in size, becoming bloated monstrosities, while others have their limbs stretched or twisted into unnatural positions, creating warped mutants. The aggressiveness of these mutants was not on the same level as the creeps, as most mutants were content to simply observe those that passed them by until someone got too close, but some did attack those they saw with as much fury as the creeps. However, every one of these joy mutants were fierce fighters capable of taking on many foes at the same time, and some were even capable of killing people outright. Additionally, they were all incredibly resilient, withstanding devastating attacks that would normally kill a man with an unflinching resolve. Thanks to the numbing effects of the joy drug, they didn't feel the pain of those attacks either, and would continue the fight until they died. This was what Yado and his investors wanted, a super soldier able to take on numerous fighters at once and come out alive. Yet, the researchers found no way to control these mutants, and so these experiments were deemed a failure, at last ending Yado's joy experiments. However, in a conversation held between Yado and one of his researchers, Yado implied that the experiments were a success for him, and says it's time to build his world. It's obvious the scientist knew something the other researchers didn't, a secret of his own that he intended to use for his own gain. Later in the game series, Yato revealed this secret. He had the incredible ability of being able to control the joy mutants by using the small trumpet he always carried at his side. And the truth behind the joy experiments comes to light. They were always intended to be used by the scientist for his own means. He just needed to discover the right combination of controllability, aggressiveness, 
and resilience to create the super soldiers he needed for his army. The names of the specimens seen all hint at how they were regarded as failures by him. The fishmen were repulsive waste due to being uncontrollable and peaceful. The mindless sheep could be controlled by the horn, indicated by the reverence of a statue of one, but being as docile as sheep, they were of no use to him. The violent soldiers had the aggressiveness he needed, and he believed he may have finally found what he was searching for. But their frailty and inability to be controlled through the horn led to the failure of that version of Joy. And finally, the perfect specimen, his favorite. Resilient, aggressive, and best of all, controllable. Spreading this version of Joy to the populace of Olathe, he intended to get as many people addicted to it as possible. So when the time came that he enacted his secret plan, he could have thousands of controllable super soldiers to make up his army and take over all of Olathe. But Yato's story will be covered in another video, and that pretty much makes up the background of joy in the Lisa games. And I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. I think there's a couple things I might have left out, like the hallucinations that accompanied the high of the drug. So if I missed anything else, feel free to point it out, and uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, feel free to share those as well. I'd be happy to hear from you. But uh, until next time, thank you for watching, and see you later.